Welcome to our lesson about MIDI record modes. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use both the linear and cycle record modes as they pertain to MIDI. First, let's talk about the linear recording modes. They are normal, merge, and replace. Normal will record a new event over the existing part, overlapping it as we've seen previously with audio work. You can then choose which event to play as we showed you previously. Let's just try it out. My MIDI and audio tracks are record enabled and the monitor is on for the audio so we can hear input. Click track is on and so are pre-clicks. Tempo is fixed, 4-4 at 100 BPM. Let's press record. and press stop. Let's return to zero and have a listen. I'll mute the MIDI track for the playback since the output's routed to my keyboard and I'll hear two of the event if I don't mute the MIDI track. Disable the audio track monitor and press play. And let's stop playback and return to zero. Now let's try another recording. I'll keep the MIDI track muted while I'm recording, otherwise we'll hear the existing MIDI data playing out the external instrument. We'll enable the monitor so we can hear our input via the audio track. And let's press record. Let's stop our recording, back to zero, and we'll have a listen to our second event. Again, what we're hearing play is the audio track. And stop playback. Okay, to hear the first take we did, let's hold down the Alt or Option key on your Mac and right click, scroll up and select to front. Now in our case, we only have two events, so only the muted one is listed here. Now it's the active take. And stop our playback, back to zero. Let's select and delete these events. Unmute the MIDI track. And now let's take a look at our next linear recording mode for MIDI merge. The merge record mode merges the new content and the existing content into one new part. If you've got a phrase that's too complex for you to play live, you can build it up this way, or you can use this mode to build up a drum rhythm, for example. Let's try it out. Select Merge Mode, and let's record. Let's stop our recording. I forgot to enable the monitor here. Let's try it again. and press stop. Back to zero. And let's record some more data now. The new data will merge with the existing data and we'll hear all of it play together as we record. Press stop. As you can see, the two laps are now merged into one MIDI event. Let's add a little bit more. Return to zero. Record again. And press stop. Return to zero. And now you see our third drum element is added to that MIDI data into one part. Let's have a listen now. Stop our playback. 
By the way, I've got a regular MIDI track set up here whose input I'm monitoring via an audio track, and this can simplify the process of monitoring. However, you can also do this via an instrument track. And let's take a look at the third and final linear MIDI recording mode. Replace record mode works just like it does for audio. It removes any event or part of an event that you record over. Basically, it's like a punch in and out on a standard analog recorder, except there's no overlap underneath. Let's review the cycle record mode options. For cycle record mode options to be available, you need to be in cycle mode. This button should be enabled. It's blue or purple when it's active. Let's drag up the transport panel a little bit. Mix is the first option, and this is like merge for audio. Each lap mixes the events from the previously recorded event. I could have also created the drum rhythm you see here using the mix mode. Overwrite works just like replace, and this is good when you're trying to get the perfect take in just one shot. Just be sure that you stop recording before the next lap begins or your take will be overwritten. Now one way around this is to stop playing at the end of a lap and stop recording in the middle of the next lap without having played a note in that new lap. And that's because Overwrite only replaces when there's new events recorded during the current lap. Keep Last works just like it does for audio. It keeps whatever was recorded in the last complete lap. If you start playing a lap but stop before it's done, Cubase won't keep that lap. But if you complete a lap and stop during the next one, it's the last completed lap that'll be kept. Now let's take a look at stacked mode. This works just like it does for audio tracks. It stores your laps each in its own lane on the track, muting the previous take. The last recorded take is the active take. This mode works just like how it does for audio. It lets you build on the content you recorded in previous laps. Stacked 2 is similar, but it doesn't mute the previously recorded laps. Stacked modes are ideal when you're creating a complex rhythm or when you want to keep the parts separate. Let's try out the stacked mode. Now just a caveat before we roll here, watch for the auto quantize toggle button under the record modes on the transport panel. When this button's toggled on, the text next to the button reads on, and new MIDI recordings will automatically snap to the current grid and quantize values that you've set in the quantize setup window. Let's close this window and toggle auto quantize off. A good time to auto quantize is when you want to be sure that what you're recording fits well with the rhythm of a song. We did cover quantizing in our previous lessons. I just mention it here because I don't want you to be surprised if your playback sounds different than what you actually recorded, like too metronomical or with rhythmic values that you didn't play. Often auto quantize is the culprit. Okay, let's set our locators now. Let's say the full four bars. First a hi-hat, then a stick, and third I'll add the ride. And now the ride symbol. And press stop. Let's return to zero. Let's unmute the first two laps. And let's have a listen. And stop our playback. What we heard was this playing through my keyboard. One cool feature about using this cycle record mode is that each lap allows unique editing in the MIDI key editor. And here's our third lap, the swing ride symbol. All right, let's close the key editor. And this concludes our tutorial about MIDI record modes.